hey babes welcome to or welcome back to my channel if you are not welcome and if a subscriber thank you so much for being here thank you so much for supporting my channel today i am going to go ahead and give be giving you guys tips and how i went from transitioning to big chopping to big chopping to big chop yeah big chop three times to now where we are today of course with the length of my hair retaining my length and of course making sure that my hair is healthy because it's not only about length it's also about a very important key for your hair is for it to become healthy because if your hair is not healthy you're obviously not going to achieve everything else that you want during your hair journey so these are my tips i'm just going to go ahead and share what i did for me trials and errors what i found to work best up until today's date i hope that you find this useful and that maybe one or two or maybe all of them can go ahead and work out for you and you can implement in your route if you're new here hello i can just go on and if you're not then you know i can just talk yes your girl likes to talk okay so i did go ahead and just write some key points down so that i don't get off subject very much and I stick on track and then as I will be talking I will also be doing my hair because who wants to sit here and just hear me talk <laughs> so without further ado let's go ahead and get started now the first point that I wanted to work on is well that I wanted to go ahead and point out is that you do need to get familiar and come up with a routine that ends up working for you what do i mean by that you do need to find something that works for you because the routine that i may have for washing my hair conditioning my hair may not work for you as good as it works for me i forgot to put on my towel you need to find your own routine by Seeing if you wash your hair twice per week, if that makes your hair flourish. Seeing if you just wash it once per week makes your hair flourish or diminish. Seeing if you wash your hair, I don't know, every two weeks. I don't recommend, I don't know, but try it. And it may work for you. You just need to generally find what works for you. And the only way that you're going to find what works for you is by trying it you can't knock it until you try it because otherwise you're going to be wondering why your hair doesn't look the way that it looks why your hair doesn't look the way that you want it to look because you're not giving whatever specific routine a shot to see if that is what's going to work for your hair the next tip that i would say is learn your hair porosity because when you first transition or you big chop you hear a lot in the natural hair community oh i have type 3a hair I have 4A hair, I have 3C hair, but at the end of the day, something that I ended up learning is your hair type really does not matter. And I'm gonna tell you why. No matter what your curl pattern is, whether you have a looser texture or a tighter texture, what matters is your porosity. What you need to know at the end of the day is what your hair porosity is. Because you need to know if you need to work harder with low porosity hair like I do to make sure that products penetrate into my hair, that I make sure that I saturate my hair. If you have normal porosity where, girl, you're blessed. Okay, let me just say that. And you don't have to put much work into it. Or if you have high porosity. High porosity just means either one, your hair is damaged or two, your hair is color treated or sometimes that's just the way that your hair is. But you can lose moisture as fast as you put it in that's just what high porosity is and with knowing your porosity it goes a long way because you can cater to your curls in a different way that otherwise you wouldn't my next tip would be of course the deep condition deep conditioning has to be my favorite part of wash day because one you are revitalizing your hair you are giving your hair that added much needed moisture after however long your last wash day was therefore you are restoring that moisture back into your hair or if you actually use a protein deep conditioner 
you are just restoring it and it just brings life back into your hair and who doesn't love to see the hair revitalized moisturized juicy bouncing back and of course with that great elasticity just to go ahead and touch on the next subject which is heat with in regards to learning your porosity this is something that you have to know because for example i do have low porosity here which means i need to work just a smidge harder to make sure that my cuticles open and i can go ahead and deposit that moisture and then seal it back the way that i do that is by actually using heat when i deep condition i do use my hot head in order to go ahead and just open my hair shaft and ensure that it is open in order for my moisture to go ahead and go in and lock in so that I can achieve a moisturizing wash and go even if it's just with my deep conditioner but I already have that moisture in my hair which is going to help me obtain longer days for my wash day the next tip that I would give is you need to find a product application technique that works for you there are many ways that you can apply product you can shingle you can rake you can use the praying method and just as a reference shingling is literally grabbing every single strand just shaking to activate and then you just keep repeating the same process raking is what i usually do the praying method head whatever it is you need to find what works for you because the person who's going to be doing your hair is you and you need to learn what is going to work for your hair next thing would be to not over manipulate child this is one that i still struggle with and i'm gonna tell you why i am the type of person that if i do not like the way my hair is looking i will keep messing with it until i like the way that it looks and I say that because it's not only counterproductive because you're doing these other things to make sure that your hair is moisturized, you're making sure that your hair is properly, is properly moisture, moisture protein balanced, but then you're here just touching your hair every step of the way, which let me tell you something, it's going to lead to breakage because it's just so much you're going to touch the same strand where it's just going to be, you know what, I'm out, I'm going to snap off. <laughs> I'm not even kidding y'all, but for real, just leave your hair alone. Just leave, just leave it alone. Once you style your hair, just leave it alone. It's not going anywhere. It's still on your head. You will be okay. It's difficult, but yeah, girl, just leave your hair alone, okay? And yes, I'm talking to myself too. <laughs> the next one, of course, is moisturizing your hair. The way that I moisturize my hair is by applying a leave-in and then of course applying either a gel or a cream. I make sure that I do not only apply down here at the ends, which are our oldest part, in the middle shaft, but also I go all the way down to my roots because what's the point of you having very much defined ends and mid, but your roots are puffy? The only reason that your that your roots are going to be puffy is because you're not going all the way to your roots to go ahead and make sure that you have even product distribution, which you should insist because we want that curl definition from root to end. Now, once you've applied all of your products, don't touch your hair. Says, hello, excuse me, do you hear me? Don't touch your hair, just, just leave your hair alone, okay? whether you are going to go ahead and diffuse, whether you are going to go ahead and, what is it called? <laughs> Air dry? Sis, just leave your hair alone. Because what you're going to create is unneeded frizz. Just leave your hair alone. Once it is styled and it is set, leave it alone okay leave it alone it's set in what it has to be which is in that beautiful wash and go that you styled it or twist out whatever you choose to do to go ahead and style your hair but it's set. you really don't need to do anything else for your hair just leave it alone sis okay go about your business and then my last tip would be to protect your hair 
you worked so hard on wash day to go ahead and not only cleanse your hair you brought moisture to it you went ahead and styled it and now you need to be able to preserve your colors your curls because unless you want to be sitting here doing your hair every other day you need to protect your curls either you can go ahead and pineapple either you can go ahead and just use a bonnet you can go ahead and use a satin scarf you can go ahead and just use scrunchies to separate baby find what works for you stick to it protect your hair because it makes absolutely no sense for you to put all that work in and then you're not preserving your curls sis. i am going to go ahead and just place somewhere in the cards a video that i recorded months ago on how i preserved my hair because we have to make sure that we preserve our hair in order for us to have a long lasting wash and go and of course protect our ends because our ends are the oldest part of our hair and we don't want no breakage because we need all this hair and this help and that is all that i have let me know down below if you found any of these tips useful if you're going to incorporate them if you already do have them because y'all be having the tea as well let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one.